Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Arjun Chaudhary. Here are the top stories attracting for you on Friday, the 13th of May. Sri Lankan President visits India to enhance bilateral ties. And now for all the details. Sri Lankan President Maithripala Sirisena arrived in India on Friday for a two-day official visit to further cement bilateral relationship between the two countries. This is his second visit to the country in 17 months after he chose India for his first state visit after being elected early last year. During his stay in the country, President Sirisena will participate at the ongoing Pitcher Festival in Ujjain city of central Madhya Pradesh province. He is also slated to tour the famous Sanchi Stupa in the province, apart from attending a function by the Sri Lankan community. The two countries share deep ethnic, linguistic, cultural and religious ties. India has asked Pakistan to hand over gangster Dawood Ibrahim after media reports claimed that he has been cracked down in Karachi. India on Thursday said it expects Pakistan to hand over gangster Dawood Ibrahim, wanted for the 1993 Mumbai serial blasts, after a television news channel purportedly tracked him down in Pakistan's southern port city of Karachi. An Indian news channel claimed that it managed to locate the Don's bungalow at D13, Block 4, Clifton, Karachi. As you are aware, Dawood Ibrahim is a UN-designated global terrorist and a fugitive from Indian law. At several points of time, his details have been shared by the Indian government with the government of Pakistan, which also includes his possible locations in Pakistan. The CNN News 18 report that you have referred to only corroborates the facts that were already available with us. We will continue to pursue this matter and we expect Pakistan to hand over this international terrorist to us. India has accused Ibrahim of masterminding a dozen bombings and grenade attacks in Mumbai in March 1993, killing 257 people and wounding more than 700. While Indian authorities have time and again claimed of Ibrahim's presence in Pakistan, Pakistan has rejected such speculations. Moving on. Political activists have accused Pakistan government of blatant violations of human rights in Sindh province by targeting minority and other religious groups. They say the law enforcement agencies are engaged in extrajudicial killings. A report. Activists have slammed the Pakistan law enforcement agencies for targeting minorities in the guise of anti-national elements in the country's volatile Sindh province. They say minority leaders and their supporters are subjected to harsh punishment if they raise the issue of human rights violations in the region. There is a huge uh, human rights violations, uh, extrajudicial killings are happening on the routine basis uh, in Sindh. Uh, uh, there is huge uh, examples, for example, there is a kill and dump policy uh, in Balochistan neighboring state and same policy is, is they are adopting in Sindh as well. The World Sindhi Congress, which has been campaigning for the human rights, including the right to self-determination, has blamed Pakistan Army for the rise of religious extremism. It has also accused the army of providing support to extremist groups like lashkar e taiba which is spreading its network in Sindh. In cities, the extrajudicial killing of Mutahida Qaumi movement or MQM worker Aftab Ahmed in Sindh's capital city of Karachi is the latest example of human rights violations by Pakistan law enforcement agencies. Ahmed died early this month, two days after he was arrested by Pakistan paramilitary rangers who have been given special pass in Karachi. Tension has escalated between Pakistan and Afghanistan as both the countries have deployed more military equipment and armoured personnel along the Torkham border over fencing dispute. The additional forces were deployed after negotiations failed between the Afghan and Pakistani officials regarding the issue. The gate was closed by the Pakistani forces on Tuesday when Afghan border security officials stopped Pakistani security forces from installing barbed wire along the border. 
Afghan authorities said that Kabul will continue its efforts to negotiate the reopening of the border as hundreds of Afghans travel to Pakistan through this border crossing for medical help, family visit and business. Moving on to news from Nepal. Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has sought for international communities assistance for reconstruction of the country after the 2015 massive earthquakes. Nepal government has been highly criticized for delay in for its rehabilitation work to provide the relief to quake victims. Stating that people of Nepal are in trouble, Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has urged international community to continue their support to the country and expedite the reconstruction work. In a meeting with envoys of various countries and members of international organizations in Kathmandu, Oli discussed the problems the country is facing due to massive wave of earthquakes it witnessed last year that killed nearly 9,000 people and caused grave destruction. Only 641 families out of millions have received a part of the total aid money for rehabilitation. We are not able to rescue the people from the grave. In fact, people are in trouble this day. As Mr. Deputy Prime Minister said, people are in trouble. We are concentrating our efforts now on the reconstruction work to rebuild. And first of all, we want to bring the people under the roof. Oli government also discussed the crisis the country faced during the ethnic Madheshi community agitation against the newly formulated constitution. The government requested the diplomatic officials to understand the reality and features about the constitution which was promulgated last year. There is a perception that the constitution is not complete, inclusive and broad based The fact of the matter is that critics have either not studied the constitution fully or they do not want to assess its content fairly and objectively. The recent blockage in the Indo-Nepal border by the Madhesh community against the new constitution had starved Nepal from essential supplies, including fuel, which also caused delay in the rehabilitation process. In an effort to impart knowledge through books to those who have inclination but no means, a mobile library has been launched in India's eastern West Bengal province for underprivileged children. To inculcate the habit of reading amongst children, especially less privileged ones, a mobile library was launched in India's eastern city of Kolkata. Kalam Library, named after India's former president and father of country's missile program, late Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, will travel across the city and provide storybooks, novels and study materials for students of all age. Kalam Library is one of the unfulfilled dreams of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. You know, it's based on the philosophy that every child in the nation should have access to books. And this, which, uh, this mission we are taking forward through Kalam Library projects. Abdul Kalam ke naim ka library kula hai. Agar ai baise hai, achche achche bache padenge, tab aage bad ke Abdul Kalam ke naam roshan karenge. The organization plans to set up around 300 libraries by the end of 2016 with an idea to fulfill Kalam's dream of building at least one library in every village of the country to inspire children. People in India's northern Punjab province are famous for their high-spirited way of life. This is being witnessed at a heritage festival that is representing the culture and tradition of the province. Loud drum beats and artists dancing in colourful attire spread an atmosphere of celebration at the 15 days long cultural festival being held in India's northern Amritsar city. The event is giving an opportunity for people to see Punjabi traditions, culture, art and craftsmanship closely. Over 150 stalls from across 13 participating provinces are also put on display. और ये सब अमृतसर को एज ए फूड हब 
जो है उसको प्रमोट कर रहे हैं अमृतसर लोगों में खाने के लिए मशहूर है उसी के लिए जो है ये फूड स्ट्रीट जो है उसमें लोग काफ़ी गिनती में आ रहे हैं बहुत ही वजिया एक यूनिटी का संदेश है कन्वे कर रहा वक्री वक्री जगह तो आर्टिस्ट आए हुए हैं और वक्री वक्री जगह के पकवान इतने आए हुए हैं The highlight of the festival is the street food stalls from different parts of the country. Food items such as biryani, Sikh kebabs and chicken curry were favorites among the people who came out in large numbers. Well that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Sri Lankan president visits India to enhance bilateral ties. Activists wary of rising human rights violations in Pakistan Sindh province. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend and good night.